today it is my husband's funeral, which unfortunately I cannot make because obviously I am busy here in Tunisia. I would have loved to have gone. We were together for 17 years. Unfortunately for me, he did decide to die on the week I had planned to come on holiday. So I... Bro, there is no way. There is no way. This got to be a skit. This has got to be a skit. I'll... <sighs> nah. No. Didn't make the decision not to go because, you know, I need a holiday at the end of the day. My holiday is way more important than sitting in a church watching people cry. I would love to give him a good send off. So I'm going to get absolutely drunk tonight with my new, with this new guy that I met. And I'm going to raise a glass for you, Jeremy, because you were an amazing husband, very rich. Um, I can't wait to do the will reading when I'm home. I have made sure I'm going to be home in time to do the will reading because I would not miss that for the world because obviously I am due to get a lot of money and that's a very, very important thing to me. So um, I hope you have a good funeral today, Jeremy. Love you. Yet again, another skit that's going to bring up some interesting conversations. So as you guys know, I'm married. I have married friends. I love my wife to death, okay? This really isn't pertaining to her. But I see what people go through when the marriage goes sour. Man's is living in his car to afford to pay her alimony and because she end up having a house. And I'm not gonna lie, that shit scares the fuck out of me. This is a conversation I don't think we have enough. A lot of times, celebrities' prenuptial agreements get in the media and we sit there and judge. But what about the who aren't celebrities? What about the regular Joe Schmo who goes to work, does 60 hours in a week just to buy his dream home, put his family in his dream home, and then one day he wakes up homeless because the court deemed that his wife deserves half. Does a guy have to be six foot to date you? He doesn't have to be, but it doesn't not help. But I have, I've been with a short king before. Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. king. Okay. But like, if you ever utter the words, you can't wear those heels. Of Bitch, I don't care about. It. I don't care about nothing else you say after that. She said, "I've been with a short king before." <laughs> you seen how her eyes lit up when she said that? I, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. Get you a short king. Oh my god, uh, she gonna be the thumbnail. Just cause she said that, she gonna be the thumbnail. Like somebody else being short, insecure. I'm like. Uh... So like, if he was confident about it, he didn't care about your height. He comes up to you me, cool. he's like, I'm four, five four, and I've got big, big energy, and you can be five nine, and you're three inch heels, so you're six foot, and I'm down here at five four, and that's cool. Then that's cool. I like this one. You would give a guy like me a chance. Too. Of course, if you're nice to me. Okay, I'm nice when I need to be, and I'm mean when I need to be. Better not be to me. Oh, it is to you, but you're usually with less clothing, and you're laying down. But other than that, <laughs> be good. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was Cheeks is out! And the vibe. Would you say you're a nerd? Do you like anime? Yeah. I love you girls. Let me get your number. You want to give a short guy like me a chance? What's your number? <laughs> Absolutely. She's not, not putting it in. Okay, I'm going to go shake some ass. Do it right now. Oh. <laughs> we'll work on it. I'm still a yeah. white girl. A couple videos ago, my man's got accused of looking like he only date white women. This is the second video in a row of you fanboying over some white poom poom. So let me find out, old girl read you right. Now I ain't even mad at you cause she had, she, she look good. She like got that whole anime vibe going on. This is the, mm, hold on, I need to say this. Young ladies, if you're a fan of anime, because you know I grew up watching anime too, you wanna be an anime character in real life. Strive for this, that sweaty perm, Trying to spike your hair up, not wearing deodorant. We ain't going for that. We're not going for that. I can talk like this because I went to an art school and it was a lot of them in there. And a lot of them joints had potential. But they, they chose to cosplay as the wrong anime character. And it, it wasn't hitting. I mean, then again, they was definitely getting hit. Because them dudes that wanted to be anime characters, they was taking it down. Ah, Lord, man. I could only imagine with that what that was like because they had their own section in the art institute and when you used to walk up in there you smell nothing but armpits and freshly opened Yu-Gi-Oh cards huh. <laughs> y'all just be sending stuff to um to see how I'm gonna respond to it. I could, let me kiss my finger. I could barely lift my damn hand. I've been lifting weights, but 
and kiss my finger. It's it's all right. Ladies, you need you need this in your wardrobe. This that get my bills paid. Mm -hmm. You put that on, whatever you and your man was going through, he going to forget about it. I still know it's a few of y'all that watch these videos religiously that aren't subscribed. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and follow me on Instagram. And make sure you got the notification bell selected to all. That way you can get all the notifications when I upload these videos. Stop playing with me. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get right. Misery loves company, y'all. That saying is so true. Misery loves company. And the miserable will do any and everything that they can to come and try to steal your joy and steal your peace. Facts. Do not be a part of the company. Don't. Do not give them your energy. Don't. Do not let them affect you. Nope. They will lie on you. They will tell lies about you. Mm -hmm. They will slander your name. Mm -hmm. They will get everybody else around to try to hate you because they hate you. Mm -hmm. Keep flourishing and living your life. Don't give any energy to the negative. Mm. Let the miserable be miserable by themselves. Mm. Yo. Yeah. That is so true. I'm pretty sure each and every one of y'all that are watching this video right now have had somebody just trying to bring you down. Trying to bring you down to their level. <laughs> mm. Mm. Let me tell y'all something, man. I had a situation that almost cost me my freedom because the person was being so abnormal. I wasn't used to that level of disrespect. I wasn't used to that level of, of hating, condescending nonsense. I was not used to that. And I tried so many different ways to end the situation, to make peace with the situation, had conversations. And the crazy thing is the person started it, but made it look like it was me. Made it look like it was me. Man's try to start something between me and somebody else. Me and the person end up getting in like a little back and forth. So then I Questioned him about it. Man was like, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. Then got to spreading rumors like I'm hating on him, bro. I'm hating on him. Crazy thing is, the whole time I was trying to look out for this man. And this man was going through his divorce, sitting there talking to him, giving him advice. Man's talking about he liked to cook. He's like, bro, just come to the crib. Come to the crib, man. I just cook this shit. I just cook this shit. Man's gonna cook for me and my wife, bro. I have a friend who is a, a general manager at one of them fancy ass restaurants in Buckhead. I'm sitting there talking to dude like, yo, you need somebody to come cook for you or whatever. You know what I'm saying? You need, you need like an intern or something. Like I got somebody that's trying to start a food truck and I'm pretty sure him being around y'all, it'll help him. I'm trying to set all this shit up, dog. And out of nowhere, folks just start hating on me. And I don't like to say people hating on me, bro. So I'm going to say this. Out of nowhere, folks just started being weird. Come to find out though, it was over a bitch. It was over some poom poom that I didn't want. <laughs> I wasn't going to touch. Nobody else wanted. You created all this static with me because I know you be watching my videos still. You created all this static with me over a bitch that looked like a troll. Think about that, dog. She looked like a troll. I don't know what you're doing in life right now, but I know you're not doing better than me. I'm not even sorry to say that. I'm sorry y'all have to see me actually saying this. But for everything you did, karma. Remember that. Karma. Um, yeah. Hi, Tatiana. This is um, Shelly from HR. HR, okay. No, I don't remember you, but what's going on? Well, we had a discussion a couple weeks ago about your absenteeism and tardiness. Okay. Do you know what time you have to be clocked in at work? Six o'clock. Yeah, 6 a.m. Okay. So, unfortunately, on 7-18, you clocked in at 6-12. Wow. We had a discussion about that. 12, 12 minutes. What you mean yeah, 12 but, minutes? You know, the, they're waiting on you to be there. It clocked in and ready Hold on, work. hold on, hold on, hold on. You can't, you can't do that. What you mean 12 minutes? Yes. Okay, okay. So, so your employment is really going to be terminated as of today because also on 728, you clocked in at 621. 21 minutes. Yes, that's 21 minutes of company time. I still, I still work though. Like, I still like, why didn't y'all tell me that today when I was just at work? Yo, I don't agree with her work ethic, but why have me come to work, work the whole day, then fire me at the end of the day? Can somebody explain that to me? If you have experience in upper management? Because I handle all the HR, so they wanted me to call you because we had that discussion, remember? About and that was the day that I let my... Alright, keep going. So you were also on 8-8. You clocked in at, like, 6-32. That was it. Okay, so I let my cousin use my car the night before. They and don't care. 
he didn't bring it. He overslept or something. He didn't bring it they back. They don't until care. The morning, so like, I still made it though. Like that has nothing to do with your job. So, and then on eight twelve, you just did a no call no show. That was my birthday, August twelfth. That's my birthday. Like, I already you told you. That day off work, so. But y'all, you that's my birthday. I'm not. No, I. No. That's fine. All right. Okay. Everyone works on their birthday. Even I worked on my birthday. Mm, Y'all too grown so. for me. Well, unfortunately, okay. I just need you to turn your keys in. And I'll your be there tomorrow, because that's crazy. That's crazy. Oh. Like, what? 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 You really surprised that you got fired? I hope in a few years you can rewatch this video and understand where you made your mistake at. I've worked at a few jobs. I've never been fired. There's one time, though, I know for sure I probably would have got fired. But, you know, I knew what I did. And I just went ahead and I quit. I just walked out. But overall, I would say as an employee, I'm a great employee. I don't feel as though any of my managers could have any type of complaints about me. I put in the effort because at the end of the day, you're getting paid to do a job. If you're going to come to work on these people clock and not do the job that they're paying you for, you might as well stay home. The way I look at it also is do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. So if I'm paying an employee, just like I'm getting paid, I want you to put the maximum effort to do your work. Now, I ain't going to lie. Sometimes companies do do some BS. You feel me? Sometimes you might have a bad manager. You might have a, a, a bad supervisor. It, it, stuff like that happens. Thankfully, I don't I don't feel as though I have that. I actually, at the job I work at right now, I actually really like my supervisor. He's cool as hell. I like both of them, actually. Both of them are really cool. But there are companies where the way that things is ran, it brings down the employee morale. But at the same time, too, there are certain employees that they do that all by themselves. That's one thing I can say I'm glad that like I have experienced just being in the workplace. Because if I was a boss, if I was a supervisor, which I plan on doing, because YouTube ain't going to, you know, keep going like this forever. I plan on opening a company, having employees, and you know, running a successful business. I feel as though my experience with being around different people in the workplace, I should be able to vet who I should hire and who I should not hire. If I was a supervisor or a manager, I'm running my shit like the mafia. In the mafia, there was no room for any mistakes. It was cutthroat. I'm not giving no room for anybody to disrespect me. The moment you disrespect my authority in the workplace, you're gone. That's how it should be. That's how every job should be. Because the moment you allow one employee to disrespect you, it spreads. And now the other employees feel as though they could disrespect you. And that one employee is going to let everybody know that they got away with disrespecting you. You got to get rid of that poison before it spreads. Get rid of that limb before it spreads to the rest of the body.